I set myself the challenge to stay overnight on a medieval event without a tent, only with medieval equipment of course. I've got only like one hour of sunlight left, let me build my stuff up as quickly as possible and then give you an overview. The event will open tomorrow though, so we can choose our site for today. That's the area where I'm gonna camp and I'll only... Crap, now I have to take care that I don't rip off the microphone. On my first night I want to improvise the cloak as a blanket, therefore I need now stones and like little branches to stick it in. As an underlay, I'll use those two blankets. I only got very, very little time left. I'm now gonna hurry the heck out of it. Okay, let's talk about the rules. The first one is that I only use medieval equipment, which the ordinary peasant also would have had and could transport over a longer distance. I'll use the stuff that was broadly available though, as drinking water, food and firewood. Come on, you see the sun already vanished. It's so well cleaned up, I'm afraid I'd have to run to the forest over there. Fucking hell. Okay, let's go. We're already in the middle of September, so maybe we've got a few more minutes of light even after the sun vanished. Oh yeah, stinging nettles. I'll use them for Tinder tomorrow maybe. I'll set the lights camera to automatically now. As a tool, I only got my knife though. <laughs> Crap, if it's on the ground, you can forget it. Those ones look good though. It's so dark, let me get my glasses on quickly. I also need a larger branch as a tent pole. Maybe that stick here? <sighs> Crap, it's rotten. It should be like a meter tall. That's something very large, but I'm afraid it's too much to get a cut with my knife in time. I thought it's way easier, like getting into the wood and finding a stick. My plan now is to get it between two trees and break it like that. Then, <sighs> although it's rotten on the ground, it has a good structure. <sighs> yes. <sighs> okay, I think it should do it. Where did I put the two little ones? I know I put them next to a tree. <laughs> Unbelievable, you gotta be kidding me. I just had them. Yes, there they are. Three and four. Heading home and I didn't lose anything. You can see how it's getting darker. It's not very even, but I think I'll go with this spot here. But there are some stones in the ground, so maybe that'll break the wood. Let's check. Did I lose one? I thought we had four or four. Maybe there's something similar on the firewood. We'll need some of that anyway. Maybe there's a smaller stick or something I can break. Yeah, that's good. I think I'm gonna use the large one as a blanket and only lie down on the brownish one here. Okay. Just put the stone under here, twist it, now make a nut. Please, please work. Okay. Where's the middle? Here is the middle. It's so stony, crap. Maybe I should find another spot. With a hammer I had a chance, but also not with this wood. Let's go. Now wish me luck here. I got a big piece of wood. I'm afraid that I could break it, but I think that should be enough now. Where do I got the other one? There it is. I don't know how much you can see right now, but the light's definitely fading rapidly. I won't be able to make a fire today. The straw is just very, very wet. The quality is so bad now. I'll just show it to you tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Good morning. This is how I slept and I'm actually quite pleasantly surprised.
It was a bit cold, but we had actually 11 degrees. And the only thing I undressed from my day outfit is, yeah, well, the cloak, of course, and the belt. And now let's take a look outside. It's quite difficult to get up. Okay, that's what I came up with. You can see I maybe should have used some more points to stretch it, but otherwise I'm quite satisfied. I was kind of afraid that I would lose too much heat, but actually the ground layer did make no problems. It was quite cold, uh, like on my knees and on the feet. Then I snuggled up and went just to the place here at the back. Then it was kind of okay, but with a fire, it would have been so much better. And I think that's the goal for today. When it comes to the weather, now it's quite cloudy, but I think it will be sunny later. You see now a lot of things condensated and on the inside, it's still dry. Uh, but I'm not sure how it would behave when it actually rains. So I want to test that. That's why I'm gonna get some water later and just pour it onto it. Maybe I'm gonna have to reposition this whole setup later because a lot of other tents will come and I could be in the way. And uh, you know, I want to make a fire right in front of the setup. Maybe this position isn't perfect for that. Although we'll have 26 degrees over the day, at night will be around 10 degrees. And although I've got a tinder and enough fires nearby where I could land a spark, I want to see whether I can make my own tinder on the go. In another YouTube video, which I will link of course, I've seen that you can use stinging nettle as a tinder. Let's try to make that. First, we gotta peel off the fine fibers from the stock. This is like my 15th try now and I finally got a decent length. I kept the other ones now because like 15 or 20 socks are a good start. They are still wet though, so let me put them into the sunlight. While the stinging nettle is drying, we gotta face another problem because I'm not sure where to put the fire and the fire pit. Like here, where my head will be or further down. I think I will go with further down. Um, it's not that much in reach, but I can enter my shelter better. I think that's what I'm gonna do. And I gotta make a short confession because in medieval ages I just would have put the fire right on the lawn but now I well have to dig a fire pit and I'll use a modern shovel for that. As you can see a lot of other tents appeared and the camp is fully running now. Okay and there we go and the stinging nettle <laughs> it kind of just looks like grass but it feels a bit harder. Let's continue by turning that thing into tinder. I wiggled it for some time now. Let's see whether it works. Ah, it should have worked. Crap. That was so nice sparks. Okay, I tried it for some time now and maybe it's just a bit too wet. Well, I surrender for today and we'll just switch to the Tinder fungus. Here we are. Okay, maybe let's see whether spark would transfer. Okay, I'll try to continue with, ah, crap, just some hay, dang. Ah, okay. Oh.
That definitely wasn't my best try. Still, it worked. I hope I won't freeze like yesterday this night. I will get some firewood now and see whether I can keep it burning through the night. It was quite difficult keeping the fire burning overnight because at first I was kind of afraid that my blanket or my cloak could catch a spark maybe. Then I just got so tired that I slept. I had to add wood like five times this night. I needed way more than I thought. When it comes to the temperature, it was quite good, I'd say. I didn't freeze. It became actually quite cozy. A bit smoky, of course, but well. Maybe the reason all the soldiers and mercenaries went up all night and drinking is that their bats are really, really bad. When it comes to the task for today, I think I'm gonna make a pillow because sleeping on my arm gets kind of tiresome and uh, now I also want to test how water resistant it is or how it would be. Maybe I'll stay in bed for a few minutes though. Two coffees and three beers later. <laughs> Let's try to emulate what would happen if it rains. Therefore I'll pour this like half a gallon on water on top of it. I'm gonna try to hit all the weak spots. You can see it forms a stream. It's not very evenly. My main fear is like if it would rain all day it would get soaked and if it gets soaked then it wouldn't only be on top but also on the inside. It's quite dry here but we got a lot of flow through. Maybe just the impact of the water of the force made it pour through. We've got like 16 o'clock so I think it will be dry when I go to bed. <laughs> well unfortunately for you the weather forecast is quite good except when it comes to the temperature but when it comes to the water resistance it won't rain. I'm afraid I'll have to test that on another occasion but it's actually a bit more frightening than I imagined. I'm just happy for now. It's really amazing like on the surface on the top now it feels like it's almost dry already. That's the reason why it's called experimental archaeology. <laughs> Let's construct a pillow now. So that was the third night now. I had to get up for like five times to keep the fire going. Uh, the pillow was a massive uplift. I would totally recommend it. This is like the thing I'm always gonna do now. It still was quite difficult overnight though and then I just decided I'm gonna keep sleeping till 10.30, 11 o'clock, something like that. That was a very good idea too. Before I can get to the conclusion, I gotta mention some very important things though. The first one is that if you want like to get into the hobby and not sure whether you want to invest for a tent, um, go for the tent. This is something on expert level, I'd say. It's nothing to start from. <laughs> Crap, there's dirt on the inside of the lens. I hope I can clean that up somehow. If you want to see me in better quality, please consider joining me on Patreon. I'm just saving for a better camera at this point. The link is in the description. And please don't forget to like and tell me what you think about this concept here. <sighs> the sun is going down and it's time to break up the camp. But before that, I want to give you a short summary of what my experiences were. First and foremost, I think it's quite sad that it didn't rain because like, you know, pouring some water over it, it just isn't a good emulation, to be honest. I wish I would have seen how it behaves when it rains, but maybe for another time. Uh, then I'm quite dependent on straw in order to make fire. Uh, it's something I definitely have to work on. Then I also used it as a pillow. That was a very good idea. I also could have used it as a whole mattress, but I decided not to just because in other situations I maybe not have access to that. I'm really positively surprised by my shoes because I thought they were maybe get untied or get wet and nothing happened. My feet were perfect all the time. Another very positive thing is that a lot of people told me that my tent most probably is the most authentic one on this whole event. That's a very good thing and you know direct compliments nothing against that. By the way it was a very good decision to fasten the cloak on this point and not here right on the front 
because by doing that I had way more protection from the environment because of the hang here. It also made it, I think, almost bigger the space. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. Thank you for joining me on this experience. If you want, you can watch another video in which I explain how I crafted all those things I've been using or maybe another in which I did a, well, wild camping in medieval outfit in Israel. See you then. Have a nice day.